finally today, we've heard about blue-green algae in the news recently. So we wanted to take a few minutes to track down some experts to help us understand the science behind the bloom. It's normal in ponds to have a phytoplankton bloom, that is microscopic algae that's distributed throughout the water column. What we begin to be a little bit concerned about is when we see a scum form as, that, as uh, some of that, those cells rise to the surface. So the, the appearances really can be quite varied, but anytime you see a scum on the surface or just below the surface, uh, that is something that uh, you, you might uh, think about. The ones in fresh water that tend to be most problematic are called cyanobacteria. So technically, they're not even algae, but we don't know what else to treat them as, so we pretend they're algae for purposes of studying them. And ecologically, they function like algae. So these are true bacteria, but they're photosynthetic. They produce oxygen, they consume carbon dioxide, and they love phosphorus. And some of these are able to take nitrogen gas out of the atmosphere so they don't necessarily need nitrogen fertilizer but because a lot of the fertilizer we use on lawns and farm fields is phosphorus and also livestock waste contains a lot of phosphorus that's leading to massive growth of cyanobacteria in fresh waters. Algae like most organisms don't like winter they like it warm and cyanobacteria in particular among all the algae like it particularly warm and, and even hot and they especially like stagnant conditions so under hot summer conditions lakes will stratify and have warm water on the top and cold water on the bottom and that allows the cyanobacteria to float at the surface and absorb all the sunlight and block the light from organisms below and that's how they come to dominate the community normally a lake or a stream would have a lot of different kinds of algae in it but the cyanobacteria are particularly good under these warm, stagnant conditions with a lot of fertilizer in the water. In a few cases, uh, there are species of algae that are toxic. And if uh, the biggest danger here is to pets or livestock. If they drink from an area where the algal scum has accumulated and it happens to be a toxic species of algae, then uh, mortalities are possible and do happen. I wouldn't panic. But in general, anything you can do to discourage pets and livestock from drinking in those downwind areas where the, the scum accumulates would be beneficial. If you are seriously concerned and you can't keep livestock away from it without a lot of trouble, you might want to get the, a sample of the water tested. There are various toxins that you can put in the water that will kill algae. The problem is you haven't fixed the problem. You've just killed it temporarily, and as soon as that poison wears off, the algae will come back again, uh, maybe worse than before because they're just going to die and release all their fertilizer into the water and then the cycle starts again. Just keep your eyes open. There are many, uh, many things that, that can go wrong in a, in a livestock operation or when you're protecting your pets. These, this is not high on the list, but it's a very dramatic situation. Uh, the, the general advice you've heard, probably heard before is if in doubt, fence them out. And that's, that's good advice until you can get uh, some other inputs. Mm -hmm.